Welcome to Slay and Excel Dragons video number seven. These are the videos that accompany the book. Hey, we're still in chapter three. Let's go over and look at our topics. We have to talk about data alignment. Why is data alignment important? Well, just like number formatting, last video is important for understanding the data that formulas and data analysis tools use. Data alignment, very important. We will see that numbers are aligned right, text left, logicals, uh, values are aligned center, and then we'll see some pitfalls and advantageous tricks to deal with uh, data that's not aligned correctly. All right, let's go over to our workbook. And of course, as always, the Excel is Fun Start workbook can be downloaded from the link below the video. All right, let's just check this out. Right off the bat, we'll see, we'll type some word a word, and when I hit enter, boom, it's aligned left. When I type a number, boom, it's a it's aligned right. And finally, a logical value. Now later we'll see logical formulas. I'm going to type the word true, but watch what happens when I enter. It's aligned in the center, and the ca they're all capital. False, too. That's important because immediately Excel is telling us with this alignment that it thinks this is text, this is a number, and this is a logical value. Now, this is very important because sometimes we get data. For example, a number is imported into Excel and it's treated as text. Then we have all sorts of problems. For example, some formulas won't work. So, alignment is important because it is our visual cue that Excel says this is text, this is a number, this is a logical value. Now this can be changed on the home ribbon. You can go to center, right? And you see this a lot in people's spreadsheet, they center. But I avoid that like the plague. And the reason why is I lose my visual cue of what type of data Excel thinks this is. I'm going to control Z. Now, by default, the reason this alignment comes is because of something called the uh, home ribbon style, cell styles, normal. Now, I don't mention this in the book, but that's this normal style is awesome. And the normal style isn't removed when you add number formatting or colors. It's removed when you start doing these things right here. So I avoid these like the plague. Let's go look at examples. We were on uh, sh alignment one sheet. Let's go over to alignment two. Now, a common problem is sales data or some number data is imported into Excel, and sure enough, it shows up as text. Well, let's just see what happens if we use the sum function. Now, before we look at this, I want to see what number what number formatting is applied to this cell. Control-1 is the keyboard shortcut to open up format cells. General. Now that's important, and the reason why is this is formatted as text. And we'll see the implication of that in just a moment. But just, that's got general to start. OK, let's do our sum function. Alt equals, well, right off the bat, you know when the sum function doesn't guess, you know that something is wrong. In essence, what's happening is it looked everywhere around the cell with a function. And it says, I don't see any numbers. No problem. We can override that. We can click with our selection cursor and uh, select that range. Now, we mentioned earlier in the last couple of videos that formulas don't look at formatting. Well, this sum function is actually programmed to not see text. The formulas we did earlier, like for payroll and stuff, we used operators like cell references and plus and minus. And in those cases, those formulas would not see this formatting. But let's just control enter, zero. Zero, And so that's the, one of the bigger problems that people have with data that's stored as text. Now, why do we go through all of this when we're talking about alignment? Because immediately, when you see a data numbers aligned to the left, you just say, that's trouble. All right, let's go see in a formula. Here we did our uh, sum function, right? Let's just go see what would happen if we didn't use a sum function. So I'm going to, this is stored as text, and right here I'm going to hit F2. There you go. That's an example. This formula is not going to look at formatting. It sees underneath, sees the number, and then goes ahead and adds them. Remember, 
this <coughs> excuse me, this kind of formula is not pre-programmed like the sum function. What's the problem with this? Well, there's a bunch of problems. One is I don't want to have to type in this. Imagine if you had 5,000 rows of data. All right. So again, what you would do is if you saw this, you'd say visual cue, I better investigate before you even uh, did this. Now, I want to show you something here. We uh, did the sum function. And remember, the cell had general number format? Well, control 1, and watch what happens. Now it's got text. Now, why is that? The reason why is because escape, I'm going to escape on that dialog box. We talked about last video when we did time formatting, the formula sucks the formatting from these cells. So even though it started with general, now it has text. Let's come over here and see another example of big trouble when you use text. I'm going to come over here and I'm, I am going to apply a number formatting, Control-1. I'm going to come over here and apply text. Now, I avoid text number formatting like the plague. And the reason why is just this. If I do a formula equals sum and then highlight this data, Watch this, Control-Enter. It doesn't even calculate the formula. Now, this is a common problem if you download templates, or sometimes people have added text number format for some reason. Who knows what? But that formula is not going to calculate. The way to deal with it is a Control-1, apply general, or whatever number format you want. Click OK. Hit F2 to put it in edit mode and re-enter it. Of course, we're going to get a 0 now because it's looking at that 0 data. But that's, we saw text format, apply, number format applied before you do your function. Your functions are never even going to get to the 0. They're just not going to show at all. Now let's look at a way to deal with this. And uh, we'll see a couple ways. Uh, and tricks coming up. But one of the fastest ways, and this is just uh, a known trick because it's so common that data comes in, numbers come in as text. We can use data ribbon, text to columns. Now, I'll talk about text to columns in great detail in our data analysis chapter, chapter 6. But here, this is just a known trick. You don't even know have to know really why it's doing what it's doing. Uh, numbers stored as text, data text to column, and then click Finish. Now, I'm going to Control-Z on that, because this is something I get all the time. So I know the keyboard shortcut. Now, remember, we talked about Alt keyboard shortcuts. But Alt-A-E-F. Now, I want to slow down a second and show you. Alt, the A is for that. E, the E is for text to column. And now, right here, this F, this underline, that is for Finish. So I'm going to hit Finish. Alt, A, E, F. I just know that one by heart because I get data like this all the time, and I just skip right over it. You can immediately uh, see that this formula right here is calculating correctly. But I want to click in this cell, and I want to use the keyboard shortcut for currency. It's Control plus Shift plus 4. Now, the way I remember this one is I look at the 4 key, and I'm on the uh, regular number pad, and I see a dollar sign. And that's how I remember that Control Shift, Control Shift 4 gives me currency. Now, I use a lot of currency for exactly that reason, because I know there's a keyboard shortcut. All right, alignment. We're still talking alignment. You have these dates. What if we wanted to count? Now, remember from last video, dates, if they're proper dates, are actually serial numbers. So this function right here, count, it counts the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. So count is perfect if you have a column of dates and you want to count them. All right, so I'm going to highlight that. And uh, Control Enter. Now it's given me one. Count is another one of these functions. It is specifically programmed to count only numbers. Now. I'm going to expand the column width just a bit here. We can already see a visual cue, and that's what alignment is all about. As Soon as you get this column of dates, you're just like, I have trouble. Now, let's investigate. I put all three or three common problems that would cause dates to be aligned to the left, which is being considered text. I'm going to click in this cell and hit F2. Probably the most uncommon, but occasionally you'll see this. Someone put a lead apostrophe. Now, that tells the number, whether it's a date or a regular number, 
to not get stored as a number, but get stored as text instead. So I'm going to backspace. Now, as soon as I hit Enter, calculates. All right, let's see this one. I'm going to hit F2. I see no apostrophe. I'm going to Control-1. Actually, you know, I do, if I have the Home tab ribbon, um, you can look up to the Number tab, and sometimes you'll be able to quickly visually see that, oh, it says Text. Control-1 is the most thorough way to see what's going on, because sometimes it'll have unusual formats. But there it is. It's got text. So how are we going to deal with this? I'm going to apply General, click OK. What? It's still? How do we fix this? We just F2 to put it in edit mode and enter. So you really, it's a two-step process. You have to format it and then edit and re-enter it. And then it, go ahead, it goes ahead and records as a proper date. Finally, this one is a little tricky, but you can sort of see visually what's going on here. Oh, there's too much space there. Someone added a lead space. So I'm going to put it in edit mode and backspace. And now we get our four. So the visual cue was that it was aligned to the left. Let's go over here and see a few other problems. Now, I want to show you something here. I There's something called error checking. And it's probably the fastest way to convert numbers stored as text back to numbers. Now, I have it turned off because error checking. And you could actually run error checking if you go to the formulas, error checking. Now, this is similar to spell check and word. And you think about spell check and word, does it always catch all the spelling errors? No, it doesn't. Error checking is even worse. I have it turned off because for a lot of formulas, it just it you have all these pop-up messages that there's an error, and there just isn't an error. So I have it turned off. But let me turn it on. File, Options, and this is the way to turn it on or off. Formulas, and then down here, Error Checking. So you can enable it or disable it, and you can even choose a color. By default, it's that green. I'm going to click OK. And so now we can see. For this example, we, it's telling us that the number is stored as text. But what's going on over here? Oh, and this is calculating if I put it into edit mode, whereas this one is not. Let's do this one first, and then we'll deal with this error checking thing right here. Oh, I always highlight first off. Well, first off, we know that it is calculating, so Excel doesn't think that it's text. So immediately, that's some sort of formatting. I'm going to go back to Home, and there's our problem. Someone has done this alignment. Now, earlier in this video, we talked about the normal style and the three things that can uh, interrupt that normal style and alignment are these things right here. So instead of going like this, then that means another format is applied. I'm actually going to uh, go over to Styles. Cells, I, I want to just get back to my normal so I know everything's going to work OK. I'm going to click Normal. Now, Normal, of course, is going to erase your currency, but I know a keyboard shortcut, Control-Shift-4. Finally, our last example. And um, it's this green error and error checking. Now, if you click in any one cell, it'll give you this, and you point to it, and there's a drop down. These are called little smart tags. These smart tags sometimes are totally awesome. But again, error checking can be annoying because it, it doesn't really check formulas very well. But for numbers stored as text, it's just as good as they get. You, you see that there, and all you have to do is click there. Now, I don't want to do these one at a time. So the trick is, if you have a whole column, you highlight the whole column. With the active cell at the top, you just click this. You see the error. You click on Convert to Number, and boom. This is calculating now. I'm going to Control Shift 4. Control Shift 4 for currency. All right, so alignment. The main thing about alignment is that it gives you good information. It's like on the front line, it immediately tells you that Excel thinks data is either text, number, or true or false. All right, uh, next video, we'll start uh, Chapter 4 formatting and page, uh, stylistic formatting and page setup. All right, now that was 78 to 87 pages in the book. Uh, there is some homework. If you download this file, Slaying Excel Dragons homework, then whether you're 
uh, in a class doing this for homework or want to practice exactly what we saw in the video, there it is. Homework problem 15, answer, 16, answer, 17, answer, 18, answer. All right, we'll see you next video.